Well, it's nearly 2020, it's around the corner and that means it's the end of a decade. A decade which has been littered with success for Celtic, you know, eight league titles in a row, we're just off the back of winning 10 straight trophies. And who would have imagined it when at the start of this decade we were managed by Tony Mowbray and didn't look like we had a hope in the world. But now, you know, fortunes have changed, Celtic are the most dominant team in Scottish football and have been for the best part of the decade. Which has begged the question, who has been our best? We have seen some fantastic players in the last 10 years and granted it may not have been the same standard as the decade before when we had, you know, our Henrik Larsons, or Stan Petrovs, uh, you know, all those sort of players. But in this decade we have still seen some great players coming through the door at Celtic Park and supplying us with some great memories. Today we're going to be going through the greatest 11 of that decade. From goalkeeper to strikers, a basic 4-4-2 and we're going to be going through each position and discussing who in my opinion is the greatest Celtic 11 of this decade. Now yes there will be players left out which you may think are, uh, should be in the team. But um, I'm just going with my own opinion here. There will be a lot of players who narrowly miss out. Trust me, some players that I had to painfully leave out of this video. But you know what? It's been a great decade for players. And um, you know what? We should just be grateful for the players that we've had. But in my opinion, this is the 11 best. And this is the 11 of the decade for Celtic Football Club. So, as usual, you would start with the goalkeeper, and that is exactly where we're starting. There was only really two options for this position, but I've had to go with the big man himself, Le Grand Maria, as some would call him, Fraser Foster, who has been here for quite a period of the decade now, and is here for the end as he was at the start. Coming back into Celtic, he has been on the same form as what he was with his original spell at the club when he first joined us, and that is unbelievable and sometimes world class. There's a reason that this guy gets the plaudits from everybody, including, you know, Spanish newspapers. His goalkeeping ability is incredible, and he's one of the best goalkeepers who I think we've been able to see at Celtic uh, over the past, you know, 10, 20 years, and he had to go in here. Craig Gordon has been a terrific servant as well, but Fraser Foster, he came in on loan, we eventually signed him, we, we, we sold him for a fantastic fee to Southampton and now he's back at you know an older age still performing to the levels that he was when he was younger at Celtic and you think of his standout performances one being the game against Rangers last weekend uh, he's a terrific goalkeeper he's a man who stands you know very 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 intimidately uh, if that's, that's not even a word do you know what but Fraser Foster is in there six foot seven he's a beast of a man and a fantastic goalkeeper at that at the right back position, there's only one option, and that's Mikael Lustig, a guy who was a loyal servant to Celtic Football Club coming over. Uh, uh, the Swede was absolutely tremendous uh, at his time at Celtic. Despite falling away towards the last couple of seasons when he was getting a bit older, you know, he always put in 100% effort. He loved the club, he, breathed, he lived and breathed it. You know, he really took everything in about Celtic, and he was really appreciated by the fans, despite, you know, as I said, falling away a little bit towards the end, but putting that aside, a terrific servant, and we're lucky enough that we're heading into the next decade with a, a right back who looks incredible in Jeremy Frimpong, but Mikael Lustig, I mean, there's not much to say about him, an absolute gentleman, someone who served the club every single game he played, he wore his heart on his sleeve, an absolute warrior on the field, and there was really no competition in this area, he's the best right back we've seen in the decade, and there's no question about that. On to the centre half positions then, and the first one we have to go with is the obvious, and that is the man, Virgil van Dijk, the guy who has just been nominated uh, and came close to winning a Ballon d'Or award, his career outside of leaving Celtic has been sensational but even when he was at Celtic he was a special player, Neil Lennon brought him in, an unknown guy, no one knew what we were going to get from Virgil van Dijk but he was one of the most comfortable, one of the most natural centre halves that we've ever had at Celtic, he could do everything, he could defend, he could pass the ball, he could move forward with the ball, he was the, the all round centre half, he could do everything and his time at Celtic may have been short but within those you know two or three years he was at the club he really did make a big impact and, and despite not having the strongest of opposition in the league he proved it in a European stage and he proved it domestically that he was a warrior and that is why he's having so much success now at Liverpool winning Champions League medals competing for the Premier League he's a very special player and as Neil Lennon has already said he's one of the best that Celtic will ever work with uh, it would be delightful if he could come back to Celtic one day probably not going to happen but he's easily in this team of the decade. So the other centre half have actually decided to go with Charlie McGrew. Now this may surprise you and you may disagree with it, but when I put up a tweet a few weeks ago saying this is my Celtic team of the decade, I actually included Christopher Ayer in this, and the amount of comments saying, no, McGrew over Ayer has made me change it for this video. The people 
seem to want to see Mulgrew in this team. And do you know what? There's no there's no disagreement from me there because do you know what? Charlie Mulgrew was a fantastic player for Celtic. Obviously now not the player he once was. We always complain when he's in the Scotland team. But Charlie Mulgrew at Celtic was a, an amazing player. A set piece mastermind as well. He could hit a free kick beautifully. And he was solid at the back. Whoever he partnered with, he always seemed to make more confident. He was just a terrific player when he was at Celtic. And this is a guy who was here right at the start of the decade. He played when, you know, Rangers were kind of at their strongest as well. A guy who, once again, really did, you know, show some passion when playing in the park. He was a terrific centre-half. And I can see why people would choose him over Christopher Ayer. So do you know what? Charlie Mulgrew... He may have not been my first choice originally, but he's made it in to the Celtic team of the decade for me. Now probably on to the most controversial position on the park, and I've decided to go with Emilio Izaguirre, and I know already people are crying out, are you stupid, Kieran Tierney played for us over this decade, but I think people are quick to forget how good a player Emilio Izaguirre actually was for Celtic, especially with his early stint in this decade, and his earlier times in the club, before he went on and got that horrific leg break. And I'm not just leaving Tierney out of bitterness, because of the way he left the club, and you know, a lot of people turned their back on him. It's not that, it's just if you look over the course of a full decade, Izaguirre came into this team probably not knowing anything about this league, not knowing anything about Celtic, and before he left, you know, he loved the club, the players loved him, the fans loved him, he really did take it all in, and once again, an incredibly passionate player, he was player of the year in 2011, he horribly broke his leg, and he wasn't quite the same player after that, but he still served us terrifically up until Tierney did break into that team, and then also he came back, wasn't the same player of course, but he was here for a large part of the decade, and he performed exceptionally for, you know, a lot of the early days in his Celtic career here. Yes, Tierney, terrific player, really was a talent for us, probably left too soon, but Izaguirre, I think people don't remember and people don't appreciate quite what he done when he was that player of the season calibre of, of talent. On the right wing, there's absolutely no question who you're putting in here, and it's James Forrest, a guy who has split a lot of opinions between Celtic fans over the decade, people saying he wasn't good enough, people saying he's a, a legend at the club. Now, I think we can all agree on this, the latter there, that he is a legend of the club. This is a guy who's going to stay his career at Celtic. If he was wanting to move, or he was going to get a move, it would have done by now. He has served Celtic incredibly. A guy who's been here from the start of the decade, and a guy who's going to be here at the end of the decade, and in that time has scored, you know, umpteen goals. I mean, umpteen, that, that doesn't even make it sound like enough. This is a player who has been there week in, week out for Celtic, and uh, despite criticism a lot, and, and that comes from myself as well, a lot of the time people saying he wasn't consistent enough, he wasn't good enough, he overcame all of that, and now we look at him as one of the, the first names on the team sheet, we look at him as a leader in the team, a guy who is ultimately, as I said, going to be here for the long haul, and he's still, you know, but he's, he's not even 30 yet, you know, this is a young guy, still, and, um, James Forrest, I mean, what else can you use apart from Celtic legend? Because he already is, at this point, a Celtic legend. And that is how he'll end his career. Um, he has to be in this team. There was no other option on the right-hand side of the park. This was the easiest position to pick, uh, first of all, for this man, Scott Brown. What, what, do I even, what do I need to say? What do I need to say about Scott Brown? A modern-day great at Celtic Football Club. The captain, the leader, the legend. The man who has lifted eight straight league titles and now ten straight trophies over the past four years. This is a guy who is going to go down as one of the greatest captains in the club's history and potentially the greatest player of the decade for Celtic. This is this isn't so easy. You know, I don't need to say much apart from this is Scott Brown. What else do I have to say? We all know the accolades, we all know the stats. Scott Brown, Celtic legend. One day he's a guy who potentially lead the club as a manager. One day he's a guy who may have a statue outside Celtic Park, who knows? But he is a modern day great, there's no question about it, and he's probably the best captain Celtic could have ever asked for. So Scott Brown, take your place, sit down, because there's no question that you're here. Bit harder to pick the partner in centre mid because we've had so many good centre mids at Celtic over the past decade. There is a list that goes on forever, but I have decided to go with Callum McGregor. A lot of people would think Victor Wanyama, but Callum McGregor, let's just think about how far this boy has come since breaking into the Celtic team back in, you know, 2014. I mean, he was a player who didn't really show great promise, but then when Brendan Rodgers came into the team, he transformed him into what now is one of the best players and one of the most consistent players in Scotland, and I would even, as, it goes far to say as Britain, he's been watched in, down in England because of how good he is, he's Mr Consistent, he is a tremendous player, he's someone once again who shows utter passion when he goes on the park, 
Uh, and, you know, the success that he's found at Celtic over the past three, four years, uh, especially when Rodgers came into the club, has been, you know, unbelievable. And he's been one of the joys to watch week in, week out. You know, the statistics about him being the most played player in Europe is, is amazing, unbelievable. For a young boy from Glasgow, uh, he has, you know, done everything that you can ask for a Celtic player to do. And he's still got more to come. He's easily in here for me, despite the amount of talent that I could have chosen. Despite the odds to pick George's Samaras so badly on the left wing, I've had to go with Scott Sinclair. Despite falling away now over the past year or two at Celtic and not being the player he was when he first came in, the, the way he did play when he first came in was unbelievable and he looked like a, a you know a, a world-class winger at times at Celtic. He came in on his very first day, joined the club and still scored. I mean, he, he signed that morning, came in against Hearts, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and scored a winning goal in the 90th minute uh, for Brendan Rodgers to pick up one of his first league wins. He was an incredible player in the 2016-17-17-18 season, picked up the top goal scorer award back to back. He was the player of the year in 16-17. He caused problems for everybody. He looked like a, a really one of a kind player at Celtic at times and someone who was a real breath of fresh air, something new in the Celtic side. And I don't think we should forget about those first two years. And I don't think many do. People really want to see him get a chance again in the Celtic side. Although those days do look gone. And his Celtic time is probably nearing its end. But let's remember the great times with Scott Sinclair. How good a player he was. He was technically so gifted. Uh, and still is technically a gifted player. He's just not got that chance. But those first two seasons at Celtic were unbelievable and some of the best football and ability you're going to see at Celtic over this decade. Moving on towards the end of the team. And the strikers at Celtic have ranged from world-class looking players to absolute dog meat. But one of the first ones I've had to go with is the man who's still scoring goals for Celtic at this current moment in time. A man who the fans love, and that's Odson Edward. A player who has been fantastic domestically on a European stage. He has terrorised the other side of Glasgow, giving them nightmares. A man who right now is probably the best player in the country, I would say. He's going to move on to bigger and better things ultimately. He is so gifted. A man with such promise. But the goals he has scored for Celtic have sometimes got you with your jaw on the floor. He is tremendous. Uh, he creates goals. He scores goals. He does everything. He can go out wide. He has really been a marvellous player since joining on loan originally at Celtic. And as I said, he's terrorised the opposition in this league. And he's going to do it wherever he goes next. Odds on Edward, a goal scoring machine. Uh, with hopefully still some more time at Celtic to come. He's going to go for big money. But right now, cherish the times I've got with him. And he's been one of the most gifted players who's came through the doors at Celtic over this decade. And he had to get in the team for me. Which finally brings me on to the last player. It was very hard to decide a striking partnership, but I've had to go with the other Frenchman. Personally, my king, Moussa Dembele. A lot of people may disagree with me on this one, but if you think of the time Moussa Dembele had at Celtic, that short two years that Moussa Dembele did have at the club, it was unbelievable. In my eyes, he is the most technically gifted and just overall best on the park player that we have seen at Celtic over this decade and that might be biased because of how much I loved him but the way he played football absolutely sensational and there's a reason he got that big move for 20 million quid to Leon, and there's a reason why he'll probably get a 50 pound move to the Premier League sometime in the near future Moussa Dembele a special special talent and yes we've had some amazing goal scoring strikers such as Gary Hooper at the club but Moussa Dembele brought something completely different to Celtic when he first came in and he'd done it from the minute he stepped into the team right until he left the team he struggled with injuries in the second season but the goals he scored and the way he played football was Incredible, and that is just an understatement. Moussa Dembele had to get in for me. He was the king of Glasgow while he was here. He'll always be the king of Glasgow to me, and he's one of the best that we've seen in the decade. So that does it then. That is my opinion on the Celtic team for the decade. The best 11 players, position by position, we have seen at the club. Yes, there are some incredible players who I've had to sadly leave out. You can only fit 11 in. There are some players who will always be up there in the conversation for being in this team that I have left out. And you all have your own opinion. So let me know who you think should have been in this team that I may have left out. And let me know your teams of the decade in the comments below. But for me personally, the team that you see on screen now is the team for me over the decade. We have been so lucky to be blessed with amazing talent right from 2010 up until you know the end of this year. And I hope the, the, the luck continues on to the next decade because it is special watching some of these players come through the door. And it's a shame that in Scotland we don't get to keep them as long as what we probably would like to. But there are some in here who have been here for a long time, some are there for a short time, but they all made a 
great impact whenever they were at Celtic. So, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I've had fun making this one. And there'll be more decade-themed videos to come, I imagine, such as, you know, goals. And maybe we'll do a worst team of the decade. Who knows? Let's just rip the arse at it. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.